I always felt there was a better way, a, a more natural way of doing things. To be honest, it's, more, it's just something that's happened and progressed na naturally. It, it's just felt right for me. It's one of those things I just sort of feel we're doing the right thing and, and you know, at the end of the day I want to be able to look my children in the eye and say, you know, we gave it our best shot. If we want to keep farming, if we want to keep producing food, if we want to, that old one, you know, feed the world, the only way we're going to be able to do that is through regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture, you know, is all about basically increasing biodiversity. What's the best of science? What's our best understanding of microbiological systems and um, soil chemistry and bringing that all together. It's about sequestering carbon into your soil, it's about looking after your water and creating clean water off your property. It's very science based but at the same time it's been driven by farmers. Whether those conversations are driven by farm system change or water quality or climate change, there's a whole lot of people on the same wavelength. Agriculture as it stands today is the biggest polluter in the world. Greenhouse gases and groundwater pollution, all of it. Farmers, I think, collectively need to see that they are part, they're a big part of the solution out there and not to stick their heads in the sand and think it's going to go away because the, the problem's getting worse. Our current farming models are, are really leaky, you know, they leak a lot of nitrogen, a lot of phosphate is lost from these environments. Agriculture undoubtedly is one of the biggest problems on the planet, along with energy and economics and population, but um, agriculture is the big one that we can really turn around just by making these wiser regenerative farming mm. techniques. My father and his father, and they put superphosphate on. Man, it made the grass grow. It's incredible. But they kept putting it on, as they're advised to do. I mean, we'll berate farmers, but everything they're doing now, they've been advised to do. Hey, Hi, Nicole. How are you doing? Great. Good to see you guys. See you. Nitrogen use has gone up and up and up and up. I mean, you look from the 1980s to now, it's gone from 80 million tonnes to 120 million tonnes, even though we've known what nitrogen's doing into the environment. It's like a drug addiction. And it's exactly what it is, really. He can put it on six weeks later, you can see a result. Fantastic. But it's very detrimental to the soil, therefore it's detrimental to the plant, and therefore it's detrimental to the animal, and therefore it's detrimental to the human. I think farmers need to take more responsibility for that. You know, farmers do see themselves as stewards and they do want to do a good job, they just don't have the tools or the support in order to be able to reduce that nitrogen. We're going to look back on this and go, what were we thinking? How do we get that system to work as a cycle so we're not having these losses to the environment? We've weaned ourselves off, off urea, so we're not adding any of that extra nitrogen onto, onto our pastures. My fertiliser budget um, four years ago was $100,000. Now it's about 35000 a year. You know, ten years' time, the fertiliser budget will be zero, because nature can do it all. You just sort of take one step towards looking after nature and she'll come rushing back with 10. Nature is all about diversity and diversity brings you know, resilience to the farming system and so with a number of little enterprises going on here that complement each other, while the pigs get to eat grass as well, that's being supplemented with milk which is um, coming courtesy of a cow. But it's a perennial system that doesn't need all that fossil fuel energy to cultivate the grain. They love the milk, they just yeah, go nuts over it. You know, there's a lot of similarities between regenerative agriculture and organic, but I think regenerative agriculture is trying to take that next step. So we just do everything different and it's quite fun. The hen house is behind those trees at the moment, but there's hens following behind that mob of cattle out there and, you know, the manure that is being left behind from the cattle, the birds, you know, the hens are scratching through it, spreading it, picking out insects and bugs, so sort of sanitising the pasture and also giving us, you know, production by producing eggs. You know, everything has multiple purposes and, you know, all the different little enterprises complement each other. Right, well this is Mangarara Eco Lodge. And the exterior is all milled from macrocarpa, which was grown on the farm. Or there you've got Horseshoe Lake, which is a nature reserve. The goal of the farm is really just optimising life, and that's not just the life of the land and the life of the soil, it's the life of the people we get to meet and 
and that that's, that's really makes a pretty dynamic place. Uh, it doesn't matter from how extreme you know, points of political view people might have, ultimately we want to leave a better future for our children. Yeah. <laughs> I think they, they pick up a lot more than, I re than we realise about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, we have a lot of conversations around the table that are quite huge really for an adult, let alone a child. Are you proud of your mum and dad for what they've done? Yeah, I'm very proud. Yeah. So I've got 22 different species in mine and I want to just go a whole lot further than that. Well, I want them to have all of these different foods, a variety of foods. They've all got different mineral contents in them and the cow will go and choose what she wants. So people are really worried about nitrates in the waterways. You get diversity of species in there, you get your longer rounds, you've actually got root systems that capture that nitrate. Instead of what we currently have now is the minute that nitrate gets below, you know, two inches, it's gone. You know, the plants can't get hold of it and farmers are just wasting their money. A lot of farmers look at the amount of grass that we've got and, and they just see it as waste. And, you know, I, trying to explain to them that you know, waste is a human concept and nature doesn't actually do waste, it's part of a cycle and what doesn't get eaten by an animal is, is feeding the soil biology. We let our grass get a lot taller than, than what most farmers would do and, and certainly you know, through the spring and into the summer we're taking some really long grass and so when we're grazing cattle through, um, you know, they're not eating every blade of grass. The, the key philosophy being mimicking wild herds of um, buffalo and, and all that from the African and American plains in terms of how they how they moved and always onto tall pasture. They'll take out you know, a good proportion, half, 60% of the of the grass that's here. And what they don't take out, ideally they'll trample and trample flat um, and they'll shit and piss all over it. It basically forms a bit of a mulch. Um, and so you know with good with good worm activity and other insects and that kind of stuff there, they're starting to um, chew into that as it decomposes and, and bury it back down. So that's that's your carbon cycling, that's your nutrient cycles. Beautiful soil. Everything comes back to soil. You know, if we're talking about water quality, if we're talking about food quality, if we're talking about greenhouse gas sequestration or emissions, you know, it all comes back to soil. Our current farming models are very inefficient. You know, we're seeing a lot of losses, we see a lot of loss of soil, we're seeing a lot of loss of nitrogen and phosphate. So it all comes back to how do we manage soil. So looking at how do we regenerate that soil so that it will hold on to those pieces. I've reduced my cow numbers drastically, which really hurt because my production fell. But it's starting to pay dividend now, a lot. It's not just about how much you produce and how much money you make. You know, that's got to be in balance with how much money you're spending to produce that. And you know, our system is working on being a lower input system. And so, but um, you know, the profits would be right up there. People are scared. Yeah, I think um, they're scared of changing because <laughs> debt, really. I think that's a big driver of all these people. I've got a neighbour here, fairly close. He's been with me on some field days and done a lot of the stuff, but his debt's more than mine, and mine's high. And he just, he can't take the jump. It's too scary for him. It's, um, yeah, these people need some help. The farming leadership is not getting in behind this. There's farmers out there that are already doing what's needed and yet we're not getting that groundswell in behind to kind of celebrate the people that are already doing just an absolutely awesome job. Um, sorry, I guess for me, I know how simple it is. I've been involved in this industry for 20 years. I'm a scientist, first and foremost. I know how the system works and I know how well it can work. And yet, um, we're just not getting buy-in and the water, the water quality, I mean, rivers, rivers are crashing. And I love this country. Hmm. I think creativity is probably, probably the, the key um, force that we need at the moment, and a bit of open-mindedness. They just think I'm wacky, which is fine by me. And 
once I'm further down the track and I've proven my model, then I hope some of them will come back and start talking to me. You know, when we get into February, March, when it's really dry and, and it's, you know, there's no grass around, but I'm still green and feeding my cows, I'm hoping they'll come through the gate and talk to me. And that'll be really cool. The cool thing about this place is it's, it's really open as a bit of an experimental site. Uh, we're willing to take risks that other people might not. I think the best thing is to come and have a look. Judge for yourselves. Give it a go. Do some trials, small ones. You know, it only has to be, you know, paddocks out of your system or a couple of hectares or whatever. Just try it and see what happens. It's a really enjoyable way to farm and that you know there's a whole lot of diversity going on and so you know it's it's never monotonous in that because and there's 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 that challenge I guess of, of trying to think your way through solutions rather than just buying your solution out of a bag and and so that's you know if you enjoy a challenge then this is a beauty.